Hello YouTube, this is Frank and today in this video I would like to talk to you about what are the best note-taking solutions for people who are interested in computer programming. And the video is going to cover two grounds. On the one hand, we'll be looking at what are the best standalone markdown editors that allow you to insert syntax highlighting supported code blocks into your notes. And on the other hand, for people who are using commercial note-taking applications such as Evernote and Microsoft OneNote, what are some of the best plugins and extensions that they can use to insert code blocks into their notes. And the TLDR version of today's message is going to be the best markdown editor that is ideal for jotting down code snippets is a piece of software called Typora. And for Evernote users, I highly recommend a piece of software called markc.co, which allows you to edit your notes in markdown mode, which also syncs with Evernote. With that said, let's jump into today's content. All right, in the markdown editor category, the first software we'll be looking at is a markdown editor by the name of BoostNote, which is a free piece of software developed by a Japanese developer and what it essentially is is that it is a text editor with the most essential bare-bone basic markdown functionalities. Syntax highlighting supports for pretty much all the major programming languages and just a ton of color scheme for you to choose from to decorate your code blocks. And as you can see, we have already populated the note area with some code snippets. How it works is that it uses three tick marks to delimit your code snippet area and it uses a string to specify which language you're working in. And inside these delimiting uh, tick marks, your code snippets is going to be rendered with syntax highlighting both in your editor and your preview area. And in terms of markdown functionality, it supports not only code snippets but also lists and you can also use the hashtags, the numbers of pound signs to specify the font size of your headlines. And BoostNote allows you to export your notes in three different formats, TXT, MD, and HTML. And it also allows you to sync your notes with Dropbox. However, the thing that BoostNote impresses me the most is the sheer number of color schemes you can choose from. As you can see, if we go to BoostNote and Preferences, inside of the Interface option, we can not only specify what kind of uh, interface color we would like to work in but also for the editor and the preview area you can see there's just a huge number of different color schemes for you to customize so right now we have our editor and the preview area using the Eclipse IDE color scheme. Now let's go and change it to Monokai. And as you can see after we hit save, both of our editor and the preview area has changed into this Monokai color scheme. However, like we said before, BoostNote doesn't support the entirety of the markdown functionalities, meaning that we cannot create flowcharts or diagrams inside of the BoostNote note area. And with that said, let's go and take a look at the recommended Markdown Editor, which is Tepora. Now, when it comes to using Markdown Editors to jot down your code snippets, I highly recommend you to use a piece of software by the name of Typora. So if we look at Typora, whereas BoostNote only support a very limited number of Markdown syntaxes, Typora almost supports the entirety of the Markdown functionality, meaning you not only can do whatever you can do in BoostNote, such as inserting syntax highlights supported code snippets, specifying different levels of headlines by using different numbers of pound signs before the headline. But you can also do things like table generating, diagram generating inside of Typora, which just makes Typora insanely powerful. And in terms of the number of file formats that you can export with Typora, it also beats BoostNote, meaning that you can not only export your notes in forms of HTML, text file, and markdown, but you can also also export to file formats such as PDF and Word documents. And one thing that BoostNote really excels and Typara lacks is the ability to customize your software's user interface. So as we have seen before, BoostNote supports a huge number of different color schemes for you to choose from, whereas Typara, you can only choose from five different themes. However, in my opinion, if you're using the software for programming note-taking, I really doubt Cosmetics makes that huge of a difference. And the thing that I love the most of Typara is that after you have created a 
a hierarchy in your notes by using different levels of headlines, you get this outliner on the left side of your interface and you can just quickly jump to whichever headline you want to examine by clicking on the headlines. And this makes traversing through your notes that much more easier after you have accumulated a huge number of code snippets over the year. And the last thing I would like to mention about Typora is that right now it is currently free for use when it's still during the beta testing phase. However, it's to my knowledge, it's going to become commercial, meaning that you're probably going to have to pay for it after the beta testing phase is over. I fully support the developer's decision to make it commercial because the sheer number of functionalities and the value that it's going to provide you really makes this software worth paying for in my opinion. So in the previous segment, we have looked at what are the options if you want to use markdown editors to take programming notes. And in this segment, let's take a look at what are some of the extensions and plugins for people who use corporate level uh, note taking softwares to take programming notes. And for Microsoft OneNote users, I recommend a piece of extension called Note Highlight. And it is a plugin for the desktop version of uh, OneNote 2016. After you have installed the extension, you're going to have this tab enabled in your OneNote application. And as you can see, you have a plethora of all the major programming languages to choose from. And let's say that we want to take some uh, JS notes. All we do is we click on the JS button and it's going to pop up this editor. And inside of this editor, we can write whatever JavaScript code we want to write. Let's say we want to, let's say we want to write a console.log statement. And when we hit OK, you can see that a, a code block with the proper syntax highlighting has been created inside of our note. For most people who just want to jot down code blocks inside of their OneNote notes, this might suffice and you can even re-edit the code you have created. All you need to do is to highlight everything and click on the language you're working in and you can just edit. However, in terms of editability, it's still not very ideal because uh, you don't have parentheses auto-completion and you're restricted to use this default color scheme for all the languages that you're working with. And another drawback is that this extension, it only works with the desktop version of OneNote. And in lieu of Microsoft's decision to really push their um, App Store version of OneNote, the value of this extension is questionable because what if one day Microsoft just decides to retire the desktop version of the software? Then in that sense, the extension is just going to be terminated. With that said, let's take a look at what Evernote Note users can do to power up their uh, programming note taking experience. So I've been an avid Evernote user for years. Evernote is my favorite note taking software. However, I'm really disappointed that Evernote doesn't either support markdown editing nor does it support syntax highlighted code blocks. For all of my fellow Evernote users, I recommend you to use a piece of free software called Marxico. What Marxico is, is that it is a markdown editor that also synchronizes with Evernote. And as you can see, after we have taken this note in markdown format, and after we have synced it with our Evernote account, if we go to our Evernote, we can see that the note that has been taken in the markdown format has been faithfully transcribed into our Evernote. All the code blocks are still selectable. However, one drawback of this Marxico software is that your Evernote copy of the note is read-only, meaning that if you want to edit the note, you have to go back to Marxico to edit it and resync it. However, this software is free and it has both a web app version and a desktop version so I don't really see any downside of using it and what it does is that it converts the markdown format into a HTML format and all the diagrams are going to be transcribed into SVG image format. So that are the two recommended softwares for people who use corporate level note taking softwares. And just to sum the whole video up, for people who prefer to use markdown editors to take note to take programming notes, I recommend you to use a software called Typora. And for Evernote users, I use, I recommend you to use Marxico. However, personally, I still prefer working with Typora just because um, the outline mode is so excellent. You can traverse to whatever section of your note at will. Whereas if you have accumulated a whole chunk of notes in Marxico, it is still going to be very hard for you to traverse. 
Alright guys, so that wraps up today's video. I hope you found it to be informative. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Frank Zhang. I am an architectural designer who is also really interested in book reading and computer programming. And this channel serves as a platform for me to share with my audience my skill acquisition journeys. And with that said, if you're interested in videos that are related to drawings and Python and JavaScript programming, please subscribe to the channel and I will see all of you in next week's video. Bye bye.